In the last chapter, we looked at different cell structures, uh, from cell wall to cell membrane to all the structures inside the cell. In this chapter, we're going to focus on one of the structures, which is the cell membrane, also known as the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is really an amazing structure because it defines the boundary of the cell, and if this boundary is damaged, then the cell is not going to survive. Okay, so the cell membrane performs many functions. I'm just going to I'm just going to give you a quick overview review and then we're going to focus um, uh, you know the specifics so first of all the cell membrane will regulate what goes into the what, what goes into the cell and what comes out of the cell and that's a very important aspect because you want certain things for example nutrients like glucose to go into the cell because it provides a field and you want the waste molecules to come out of the cell right and for pathogens you know like bacteria virus you want to keep them out of the cell so that they cannot infect the cell. So all those things are performed by or achieved by the cell membrane. The cell membrane itself is not rigid at all. It, it can be really, really flexible, and this allows the cell to change shape. Okay, so for example, red blood cells, white blood cells, a lot of times they have to go through very tiny structures, um, you know, very little space, so they can change their shape so that they can squeeze through. The cell membrane also carries uh, markers for cell recognition. So this is how your body can tell whether a cell is self, okay, coming from your body or non-self, coming from um, another individual, you know, another species, you know, from um, external source. Um, this is also the basis for the rejection reaction when we do like an organ transplant, okay, so, so the patient's body can recognize you know, using the cell markers um, that this organ, you know, the cells from this organ uh, are not our self cells, so we need to attack them. The cell membrane also carries receptors for cell signaling and communication, and interestingly, this is, uh, this provides a mechanism for viruses, okay, to trick the cell um, and get into the cell and cause infection, okay. So we'll talk about that uh, a little bit more later. Now, just to give you a quick uh, overview on all the structures in the cell membrane uh, or on the surface of the cell membrane. So there is actually a lot going on. So let's look at the backbone first. Now, if you remember from the biomolecule chapter, the backbone is made up of a type of lipid, and specifically that's a phospholipid, phospholipid, and it's a bilayer. Okay, so if you look at this backbone right here, um, this is a typical structure, right? The polar head with a phosphate group. That's why it's polar. And then two nonpolar fatty acid tails. This is one layer, and then that's another layer. Okay, so that's the phosphate bilayer. That's the backbone for uh, the cell membrane. There are proteins embedded in the cell membrane. So all of these are proteins. All these are proteins. Okay, so there's some more information on the next slide. So there's peripheral proteins. Now these proteins uh, are usually attached to the surface of the membrane, right? Like a ship tied to a floating dock. Okay, so uh, let's see, these are the peripheral membranes. Yeah. Okay, so see they're located on the surface, kind of almost like they're anchored to the surface of the membrane. And the second type is transmembrane proteins. Now these proteins are also known as integral proteins because they span through the entire uh, cell membrane. Okay, see they go through, right? They go through, they don't just stay on the surface. So transmembrane, they go through the entire membrane. All right, now the third is the interior protein network. So these proteins are located uh, inside the cell on the interior of the cell membrane. And they determine the shape of the cell and they can also anchor uh, things like other proteins. Okay? So usually these proteins are located on the interior of the cell membrane. Um, the next component is cholesterol. Okay, So um, in this picture, if you look at the, the yellow molecule, that's cholesterol. Okay, if you remember, cholesterol has that typical structure, like a typical ring structure, right? The adjoining carbon rings. So these are cholesterol. 
Um, cholesterol is only present in animal cell membrane. Okay, so you're not going to find that in the plant cell membrane. So animal cells only. Now the cholesterol, the presence of cholesterol really kind of increases the um, kind of flexibility of the cell membrane um, and makes it uh, kind of like a fluid instead of a very rigid structure. So um, in some animals, especially those who live in very cold uh, climates, cholesterol acts as almost kind of like antifreeze in the cell membrane. Okay. So it uh, prevents the cell membrane from becoming uh, too rigid. Okay. Um, the next one we're going to look at is the cell surface markers. So these cell surface markers contain carbohydrates. If you remember carbohydrates, you know, simple sugars or complex carbohydrates like cellulose or starch. Okay, so those are carbohydrates. In this group, we have glycoproteins and glycolipids. So glycol indicates sugar. So glycoproteins, uh, there are complexes of sugar and proteins. And the glycoproteins, those are molecules that have both lipid component and sugar component. Okay, So they're indicated over here. So this is a glycoprotein. So you have the carbohydrate component and then the protein. And these are glycolipids. So you have the sugar component and then the lipid component. Okay, so these are all the things that you can find uh, in the cell membrane. Okay? Now there's a one thing that's not in the text, um, but it's indicated in the picture. So this is the um, carbohydrates of glycocalyx. Um, so don't, you don't need to worry too much about this. Um, it really just means that you have uh, a lot of sugar you know, uh, on the surface of the cell membrane, so it makes the cell membrane kind of like a um, sticky, right? W when you think of a sugar solution, it can be really sticky, right? And it's the same thing for uh, the exterior of the cell membrane because there's a lot of sugar attached to it, so it can be very, very sticky. So just real quick, we have gone over this information in the previous slide using the animation. Um, so just real quick, point out a few important uh, pieces of information. So remember the backbone is a bilayer of phospholipids and you need to know uh, which part is polar, which part is nonpolar. Okay? So um, it's right here and then the membrane is studded with the proteins and there are three types of proteins that are associated with the cell membrane. Okay, So we went over each of them and then we have cholesterol, right, but only in animal cell membrane. And then the last one is pretty important, okay? Um, so we have carbohydrates attached to some of the proteins or lipids in the cell membrane. And usually they are on the outward facing surface of the membrane. So they're facing to the exterior, the extracellular matrix. Okay? And um, these complexes uh, function as cell markers, right? So we can use that to identify a cell. Okay, okay so now um, since the cell membrane is so uh, critical in terms of, you know, viral infection, pathogen infection, um, so we're going to look at how viruses infect specific cells. Okay, now in this picture um, it shows the HIV. Uh, what does it HIV stand for? There you go. So it's the human immunodeficiency virus. So if you're infected by this virus, you are going to have in impaired or compromised immune functions. So you're more likely to um, get infections. All right, so this is um, pretty interesting. It talks about the, uh, you know, the origin of the HIV, the virus. Um, but I wanna point out a couple things that are related to the cell membrane. Okay, so this is a, a human cell, this is a human T cell, because HIV specifically targets the T cells um, and some of the monocytes. So T cell, it's a type of immune cell, okay, so that's the target. So this is a T cell and this is the cell membrane of T cell, and this is the HIV virus. Okay. Now the proportion of the size is not correct because they want to show you, you know, all the different components. Um, so the virus usually has kind of kind of two main components. The first one is going to be a, a protein coat, 
and there may be you know carbohydrates, uh, proteins and stuff uh, in this protein coat. It's like a capsule, and inside that's the genetic material for the virus. For HIV, it's RNA. It's not DNA. Okay, so it's a it's a one strand RNA. Now, in order for the virus to infect the cell, to successfully infect a cell, um, the virus has to find a way to get into the cell. Okay, so um, in this case, the T cell has CD4 receptor. Remember, we said um, over here that the cell membrane carries. Uh, different kinds of receptors for signaling and the communication. So in the HIV case, the T cells have this CD4 receptor and a co-receptor. So the HIV has something um, on the coat that can trick the receptor and the cell um, into letting the virus into the cell. Okay. So the cell has the binding sites on the surface, that's the CD4 receptor. And the virus can exploit this receptor with specific glycoproteins in their coat. Like they have the components that can, can activate or trigger this receptor or bind it to the receptor. And once that happens, the cell says, come on in, you're a friend, come on in. Um, so this, the, the virus coat can fuse with the cell membrane and it's gonna inject the virus is going to inject the RNA, its genetic material, into the cell membrane. And if you remember, this the cell, the this is the nucleus, right? And then everything between the cell membrane and the nucleus is the cytoplasm. So once the RNA reaches the cytoplasm, it's going to use an enzyme to make a DNA. And that's the almost like the viral DNA not directly but it's made from the viral RNA and then the viral DNA can get into the nucleus and kind of incorporate itself into the human DNA and then whenever the DNA is replicated or uh, transcribed to direct the synthesis of protein that means your cell uh, is going to make the proteins directed by the viral genetic material. So the cell becomes a little machine for the virus to, to make more viruses. Okay? So this is how the virus can affect our T cells. Okay, So it's actually a quite interesting process. Okay, um, so this slide is pretty simple. I know there's a lot of text, um, but it really just talks about the fluid nature of the membrane. Okay, so again, um, it's because of that fatty acid tail, so hydrophobic, but um, it can add kind of this fluidity to the cell membrane. And another con uh, contributor is the cholesterol. Remember we said the cholesterol makes the cell membrane very flexible, right? It almost acts like an antifreeze. So the mosaic, the fluid mosaic model, um, it's pretty simple. It's really just kind of talks about that in general, um, all the compon components in the cell membrane can flow and change position. Okay, very flexible, um, but they still maintain the basic integrity integrity of the membrane. Okay, so that's pretty much what that fluid mosaic model is about. Right? So they're dynamic, and they're constantly in flux. They're not static or rigid. Uh, if you're interested, you can look at animation of the fluid mosaic model, and you can see how the uh, cell membrane kind of flows like a wave, right? When you're at a baseball game, you do the wave, it's kind of like that. And then the proteins are kind of little um, boats in the water, so they can move around. Um, they're not, you know, anchored to, to any position, right? They can move around, flow kind of almost inside the cell membrane. Okay? Um, we mentioned this a little bit in the biomolecules chapter, but again, because it's so important, I just want to do a quick overview. So this is the structure of the phospholipid. Um, and then this is the polar head. Again, why is it polar? Because it has this phosphate group, which carries a negative charge, right? Anything that carry a charge, whether it's positive or negative, they're going to be polar. They're going to love water. And then this is a glycerol component. Uh, it's a little bit less important. So 
um, you can kind of just move on to the next, the, the hydrophobic tail. So it's made of fatty acid tails, right? The hydrophobic fatty acid tails do not like water. They fear water. So because of the two different natures of the head and the tail, in an aqueous solution, okay, if you put these phospholipid molecules in there, they are going to automatically arrange themselves where the polar heads are going to point outwards, okay, and so they can come into contact with the water, and then the hydrophobic tails are going to face inward so that they don't have to come into contact with the water. They can avoid water. So you may form a sphere, uh, that's very possible, um, or in the case of cell membrane, they're going to form a bilayer sheet. Okay? And then, you know, eventually you're going to have a continuous uh, membrane, right, made of these uh, lipid bilayer. Okay, so here are some practice questions. First of all, what chemical property characterizes the interior of the phospholipid? phospholipid bilayer. So what about the interior? So that means it's the fatty, fatty acid tail. So what is it? Is it hydrophobic, polar, hydrophilic, or saturated? Right, the correct answer is it's hydrophobic. Select all statements that are true about ions. Now this requires a little bit of critical thinking. So the correct answer is A. They interact really well with the polar molecules because ions are atoms that either gain or lose electrons, right? So now they carry charges. They carry negative or positive charges. So they can react very well with other polar molecules. Um, that's not true. They do carry charges. They're repe repelled by the hydrophobic interior of a lipid bilayer. This is also a correct um, statement. So the correct answers is A and C, because they're polar, so they are going to they're going to be repelled by the hydrophobic component of the lipid bilayer. Okay. All right.